Hey everyone, this is Alex with another Rapid Fire review, this time for Hazelight Studios' It Takes Two. This is their second major release after A Way Out, and much like A Way Out, It Takes Two does not have a single player option. This is purely a co-op adventure. The game does come with a free friend pass, so if you can't play couch co-op like we did, you can still play with a friend online for free. This may seem too good to be true for the $40 asking price, especially since the game was published by EA, but this game was actually funded with EA's Originals program, which allows Hazelight to retain complete creative control and keep the majority of the game's profits after costs are recouped. Now, we criticize EA quite a bit here at the Angry Joe Show, so I feel it's appropriate to point out the few times where they do something right, and this is certainly one of them. Joseph Ferris, the infamous fuck the Oscars guy. Fuck the Oscars, you know? <laughs> fuck the Oscars! Fuck you! I'll tell you! I'll just like Who went on a bit of an unhinged rant at the Game Awards a few years ago, returns after a way out to act as a game's director. Now, if you aren't familiar with him, his interviews for the past several years have been absolutely wild. He appears to be a crazy person who seeks out cameras and microphones to ramble on about everything and nothing, leaving the viewers unsure if this person is stable or not. Now, after playing this man's game, I can't honestly tell you that he's stable, but I can tell you this man knows how to make really good video games. The studio set out to design a co-op game with as many mechanics and set pieces as possible, and that's exactly what this game is. There's so much here, it's a bit hard to fit the game under a single label. It's an action-y, adventure, platforming, puzzle-filled, co-op amalgamation with dozens of mini-games, wild settings, and boss encounters. The game's controls are fairly simple, but they do the job, and rather than relying on mechanical difficulty or timing to keep the players interested, the incredible variety of gameplay is what kept us engaged the entire time. Now, I don't want to make it sound like this game was too easy. There were many, many deaths to be sure. About 111 for OJ. You killed me! I pressed the button! You did not! I pressed the button! You clearly did not press the button! You shut my then! You son of a- <laughs> Look, the game slowed down a little bit. We gotta spice it up a little bit. You were right. messing up. Oh my god, OJ. I was going up top! I had let go of the goddamn I thing. I was going up top! <sighs> See? It's definitely not therapy game. But difficulty really isn't the point here. It's more of a wild ride you're on together. Though there are plenty of opportunities in the minigames for a good head-to-head -head challenge if you really want to prove that you're the better of the two parents. Why? <laughs> you're not as good as fingering. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> the seven different levels are wildly creative and fresh. Even in each individual level, there's an incredible amount of variety in mechanics, settings, and minigames. The game never really outstays its welcome. You spend just the right amount of time with each aspect. It's truly impressive. The music and sound design for the game are also pretty special. Composers Christopher Ang and Gustav Griefberg put together some amazing pieces for the game. Many go well beyond the standard video game background music you barely notice. We stopped several times playing just to appreciate what was going on in the background. <laughs> Could see us. He'd love it. Or hate it. And the entire sound design team deserve a lot of credit for the sheer amount of high quality work that had to be done for so many levels, sub levels, mechanics, mini games, and bosses. With several times the gameplay variety, they needed several times the sound design. All right, now to the story. The main story beats work well enough here, and they certainly tie together the different set pieces pretty well. There are some odd story choices the game makes, seemingly for shock value, and they felt a bit out of place. But you'll just have to play the game yourself to see if it's something that may bother you. Jesus, this game's brutal. It's for your own good, alright? Time to sleep with the fishes! Parents are dancing in their child's tears. <laughs> Who made this game? Satin? <laughs> there are also some really great side characters here and interesting and inventive situations you find yourself in. So there's a lot of great stuff going on in the background. You'll just survive two. Against a whole swarm of them, surely we'll die. That's why you're going to need this. My latest in cyber hazelnut technology. <laughs> the tree sap up shiky 15. I can't let you harm her. I'm her best friend! Hello, she hasn't played with you for years, okay? Now you play as either Cody or May, two horrible, bitter parents, and at the start of the game they've decided to get divorced. 
Cody is mad that May works and supports the family, leaving her unable to spend as much time with them as he wants. And she is mad at Cody, probably because that's a stupid ass thing for him to be mad about. Yeah, well, you haven't played here lately. You missed half. Oh no, I'm not allowed here. Rose calls oh, it mommy's I love space. No, as, as in outer space. Oh, I didn't know. Because you're always working. Lights out, Cody. Oh. Let's not discuss that again. Just saying. I never liked the forced Cody, drama in stories where it's like you work. It it's like we, you like you like eating yeah, yeah, and you don't work kind of and well, look, it's it's not like she's volunteering to put in. As you reveal your plans to your daughter through some sort of tears-based sorcery of hers, you are knocked unconscious and arise in the body of either a clay figure or a wooden doll. Your story, Sherpa here, Dr. Hakim, is a talking relationship book trying to get the two main characters back together for some reason. The main characters and their dialogue are a bit of a mixed bag. There are times where I really am pulling for the two to rekindle their relationship. And then there are times where I want them to stay together forever. One, so they stay miserable for the rest of their lives like they deserve. And two, so they don't pollute the dating pool for the other fictional video game characters. I can definitely see why May is divorcing this guy. He's an idiot. <laughs> you might have a great personality. Hmm? You might be funny sometimes. Pre-divorcees present a difficult writing situation. The writers certainly sold me on the reasons why they should be splitting up, but they did so good of a job they were never really able to pull themselves out of that pit they started them in. I never really got to that point where I believed they should be together. Now as for Dr. Hakim, he didn't always resonate with me. I spent too much time rolling my eyes at what he was saying or being annoyed at him showing up and stalling the gameplay's momentum. Throw your nail at her Achilles! Dr. Hakim's a dick. Overall, the story and writing portions of the game are actually fine. But compared to the truly stellar gameplay and other exceptional aspects, it certainly left me disappointed by comparison. The thing in front! The thing in front! No! Oh, we made it! Ish! Hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand combat is what I've been training for. Wait to smash your wooden face. I can't wait to kick your furry ass. Kick him in the balls! In the end, I cannot recommend this game oh, any more highly. Go get this game, find somebody, force them if you have to, and play it. EA's name may be on the box, what? but this is an indie game, and a damn good one, and it deserves the support. After the initial success the game has already had, Joseph should be able to continue being his slightly nutty self and can keep making great games that I want to play. I'm giving It Takes Two a 9 out of 10. You really don't want to miss this one. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the game. And we shall see you on the next what? Angry Joe Show. Not name any How many times did you die? You more than doubled my deaths. And you hit triple digits. I think half of those... <laughs> Were because of you. <laughs> even if even if half of them were because of me, you still died more than I did. One eleven was. I want to recount.